From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond, love your London, have a banana. Today on Love Your London, we'll finally be visiting our first Acton pub. But first, we're going to show you that history in Mill Hill Park can be dated as far back as the cave persons. OK, so I'm currently on Avenue Road. This is a little road off just off Gunners, uh, Gunnersbury Lane. And everything that I'm going to show you in the next few minutes is all thanks to the Mill Hill Park Residents Association of Acton, who have done a fantastic study of this area. I've got a link to the PDF at the bottom, just before, just above the comments. This particular area used to be called, um, no, it's called the Mill Hill Park. In fact, the old name for Acton Town Tube Station, if we go a long, long way back, was Mill Hill Park Station. Now, North Londoners might think that's strange, Mill Hill. Uh, this has obviously nothing to do with the Mill Hill near Edgware. This is Mill Hill here in Acton. And uh, this whole area um, has huge historical interest, which we're going to see now. We're going to take a little right now down Heathfield Road and we'll start off from there. So, <clears throat> the one thing I've got to tell you about Heathfield, about, oh, uh, sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay, so the one thing I've got to tell you about Mill Hill, about this area, um, is um, this, this park went on for ages. Um, we know that in 1086, uh, just 20 years after Norman Conquest, the Bishop of London, um, who then owned all of this land, he started subletting it off. 200 acres of it. Um, it ended up eventually in the hands of the Dean of St Paul's in the early 1200s and this is in fact the area where Bolbrook Meadow stood um, and at the end of this road you would actually come to where the old Bolo Brook used to be. Okay we're now going to go uh, down Heathfield Road and stop at number 16. And a really really interesting character lived here um, from about 1890 until after the First World War. And his name was Charles Alexander Buckmaster. Uh, he was a local magistrate, he was on the Board of Education and the governor of the Acton County School, which we're going to be visiting later. Uh, he was fascinated uh, by cooking. He had loads and loads of, I suppose you could call them au pairs, uh, but a multicultural domestic staff. He hated English food. Um, so he, he would go around and he would lecture on how to make the perfect omelette. Uh, a load of other things. He used to think that English cooking was vile. The average Englishman and the savage are the only human beings to whom cooking means simply warming meat at a fire. He had installed this beautiful lintel above the door with a big B on top. Now that B doesn't stand for Buckmaster apparently, it stands for the Battersea St John's Trade School. But it just so happens that it does share the same initial as Buckmaster, so... Mm, coincidence? I don't know. Um, now obviously there were no roads here, um, this used to be all fields um, and the Dean of St Paul's got, ho got hold of um, this area in the early 1200s. So you had Ballbrook Meadow to our left, uh, to our right uh, this area was called Little Meadow and further over there the much larger La Poule Meadow. Um, but basically this, this area changed hands so many times. Uh, I mean, just, just read that document by the Mill Hill Park Residents Association. It has, has it all there, all the people who changed hands with. Now a very large part of it was sold to a very important person who lived at number 11 Avenue Crescent, which is where we are at the moment. And his name was Richard White, no relation. And this is the green plaque that was put there by our friends at the Mill Hill Park Association. It used to be known as Act Acton Hill House and it was a fabulous property. It had amazing gardens, it had a sundial. There could have been a windmill. I mean, this is called Mill Hill Park after all. Uh, he was a, a really, really top lawyer and he was also a huge philanthropist. But his biggest gift to the people was using his legal prowess to ensure that bills passed so that the poorer people ended up not having to pay such high rates. And by do the way he did that, he sort of started a very early form of public-private partnership. Uh, he um, got the railways, they needed a lot of common land, so he got the railways to compensate by um, every mile paying rents of between 700 and 1,000 pounds. 
Um, and with that money saved, the poor were subsidised. And by using his legal prowess, he managed to get that through Parliament, which was a fantastic. Now, in his, in his grounds, it had these massive, massive fates. Um, and it asked, he'd bring long, huge, huge children to come in and eat the fruit in his orchards and, and apparently he used to also lecture them on how bees worked. Not the birds and the bees so much, but just like literally beekeeping. In 1877, all this land was bought by a chap called Mr. William Willett, who was a very, very entrepreneurial building developer. And his son, who was also called William Willett. And they built this road that we're on now, Avenue Crescent. In fact, he built all the roads around here. He was an urbanizer. He turned everything into this, this layout and sold off little parcels, little, little areas of ground. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of this house has been torn down. And it's not really even the, say, the real front. I mean, if we go down towards these garages, I think we'll see some of the remains of and the windows. If we look at the, we've got the original windows. I hope they don't mind me walking up here. Here we go. We have some of the original windows, apparently, here. And uh, we've got um, um, and one good thing about William Willett is that whenever they dis discovered something of historical importance, um, they looked after, they made sure that it went to the museums, etc. Well, first of all, we're going to look at number 16, which was M William Willett's actual original house. We just went past it over there. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him. <laughs> OK, so uh, we're now outside number 16 Avenue Crescent. And as you can see, the green, the green plaque there, William Willett. Now, he was a very meticulous builder, uh, him and his son. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of light. For him, light was very important, as it was indeed for his son, as we'll find out in a sec. And talking of light, it's William Jr., Willett Jr. Uh, he was not, so, not as well known for his buildings. As you can see from the green plaque, it says, obviously it says he was a builder, an originator of daylight saving time. Now, quite confusingly, um, we should note that William's idea was for the clocks to advance by 20 minutes. Uh, every Sunday morning in April and back by 20 minutes every Sunday morning in September. His great-great-grandson was Chris Martin, or rather is Chris Martin, of Coldplay. Um, he wrote songs called Clocks and Daylight. Um, now I don't know if that's a coincidence, it probably isn't because he was well aware of his heritage. Uh, Chris Martin was actually uh, invited to perform um, at the unveiling of this plaque by the Mill Hill Park Residents Association. He turned it down because he was in the middle of a tour. Never actually was a big fan of Chris Martin anyway, shame on him. Talking of time, time is marching on. And uh, now outside number 51, um, his workmen discovered in 1882 Bronze Age cremation urns. Now all the workmen were really aware of the importance of local history and local, local archaeology. So the bronze urns, as I said, can still be found to this day at the Museum of London. Um, now, back in 1981, when the original house that was here was being demolished and uh, the one that was that's behind us was going to be built, the LAMAS, which is the London and Middlesex Archaeological Society, created a few trenches and they discovered right here flakes of flint from the Paleolithic era. Cave persons from the Stone Age um, uh, were, were, were well, living here. This is where their, 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 their cave or their, their burrow was or whatever. Um, and the, and, the, and the people certainly hung around this area, probably thanks to the lovely Bolo Brook, which was just behind, would have been just behind this property. So much more sophisticated pieces of burnt and struck blades and uh, scrapers were also found in this area. Uh, they're da dating from the Mesolithic era and the first few thousand years BC. And also in the ditches, lots and lots of Roman stuff, uh, including that amazing decorated Terra Sigillata bowl from Gaul from between 100 and 125 AD at the Gunnersbury Park Museum. There are also second century potty, pottery from Trier. A few gold Roman rings were found. Um, loads of stuff were found in the book. Some Iron Age coins as well. Um, that was found a lot earlier. Uh, I mean this, this area was bombed uh, in the Blitz uh, but as a sort of an, a nod to the Roman history this area is called Roman Close. There was in fact um, an air raid shelter just here 
um, and there was a big there was a big Bertha gun in Gunnersbury Park um, but unfortunately the bomb just fell here and uh, fortunately it was obviously after um, the discoveries were made by the workmen who will say well that would have been probably destroyed as well by a big bomb crater okay so the name of this amazing house on number 36 avenue gardens is oakley and when willett's men were laying down the foundations to build it which is uh they built it for a chap called samuel cobb they found even more bronze age urns and they were shaped like buckets and you could even see the fingerprints around the rim and the interesting thing is they were actually full of old bits of human bone um, now, the funny story is that the person who was buying this house, Mr. Mr. Cobb, he used to live over there, opposite. I think in the old days it was called Langford House, it's now called Weeks House. Okay, so, so, when, so when the urns were discovered, um, he made sure that the urns were taken to the uh, Royal Archaeological Society in 1882, um, but he buried all the old bones in his old house over there. Um, he didn't think that, that the Archaeological Society would be interested in them. So as far as I know, the bones are probably somewhere buried in their garden still, because that house hasn't really changed much apart from the name. Right, so let's gonna, we're going to carry on back up this road, and funny enough, we're going to be back on Avenue Road, because all roads around here lead back, lead back onto Avenue Road. It's going to take you on a very small detour, because there's a rather famous piece of televisual history lying not that far from here. Bush, 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 yes. I think you've guessed it by now. Um, these buildings behind me, um, they were used, I mean, you've got Harlech Tower over here and you've got the other tower over there, which is Corf Tower. Um, these are the ones that were used in the opening sequence of um, Only Fools and Horses um, for um, Nelson Mandela House. Now, this is a really shocking thing, and this is really, really bad. Um, I think it's disgusting that so little is really being done to preserve televisual history in this country. I believe that they're on the verge of being demolished, or at least that's what I've heard. Again, similar to Sid James's house that we already saw uh, much earlier. Um, you never know, these things can drag on and hopefully it'll be saved. But I think it's, it, is a, it would be a real shame for, for our heritage if buildings like these, apart from the fact they're absolutely beautiful buildings, um, I, I love them. Um, but apart from that, the fact that uh, these might in fact disappear, I don't know, it's just going to be sad. Now, if you would like to sponsor our videos, of course, uh, maybe one day we'll be, like Del Boy used to say, millionaires next year. Uh -huh. um, but certainly, at the very least, subscribe. Click that button down below. Click the like, that's really important as well, but subscribe to these videos. Okay, so uh, we're now going to go back down uh, Avenue Road to where we came up, where we were earlier. There's one very little park that I want to show you. It's really sweet. It's in the old Bulbrook Meadow. Um, now a lot, of, a lot of people actually don't, don't even, even local residents aren't even aware of this. Um, but basically, uh, this little playground um, is right between all those buildings that we saw earlier. Right, anyway, this used to be croquet lawns, tennis courts, uh, you name it. And um, again, I've got uh, to thank the Mill Hill Park Residents Association of Acton for this little tidbit. But um, in the old days, there was a rather crotchety old gentleman um, who lived at number 12. And he used to complain um, at all the tennis balls that used to bounce from here and into his garden. Um, and he actually made a, made a complaint to the local tennis uh, association um, and, um, and said that, um, I'm going to quote this. Some females are coming round asking for their tennis balls. Should anyone ever call here asking for them, every ball found will be instantly consigned to our kitchen fire and destroyed. But so long as no further annoyance is caused, balls found here will be immediately thrown back over to the courts. So I suppose he was reasonable, but he obviously didn't like, for some reason, the young girls coming over here uh, back in 1909, which is when he made the complaint. Um, he obviously didn't like the fact that um, balls were falling in his garden and uh, people were knocking on his door to try and get the balls back. Okay, so you remember that um, house back there earlier where um, 
That big B was on the lintel. Charles Alexander Buckmaster, who was that amazing person who, who, who was really into his omelettes. Well, he was governor of this school. Now, obviously, this is not an 1800 school, but not one, not two, but three members of the Who. Pete Downsend, John Entwistle, you remember old the ox that we saw his house earlier, um, and Roger Daltrey. Uh, Keith Moon didn't attend this school. And, and Acton has always been really close to the Who's, the Who's roots. Pete Townsend even wrote a song uh, in 1982 called Stardom in Acton, because it shows Acton in 1982, uh, some of the old footage, the buses, the roads of Acton High Street. It's fascinating to look at. And not just members of the Who, but also uh, we had um, their contemporaries here at Acton County Grammar School, such as Speedy Keane from Thunderclap Newman. Uh, now he, he wrote Thun Something in the Air, which was number one for three whole weeks uh, in 1969. And he also wrote a song for The Who called Armenia City in the Sky. Now there's an actual funny coincidence about Armenia, I'll tell you about that in a second. Someone else who went to the school was Ian Gillen, uh, the lead singer and songwriter for Deep Purple. Uh, he went to this school and he was also a contemporary of theirs and he also has a funny affinity with Armenia because he was one of the people who were in charge of that um, huge uh, fundraiser after the Armenian earthquake um, called Rock Aid Armenia uh, and that was set up to uh, to help all those who were affected by the 1988 um, Armenian earthquake he went to this school what is it about Armenia now, over there, you probably can't see it from here, but I'll just, uh, we'll go over there now. We have the Center for Armenian Information and Advice, the Hayashen. Now what this is, this is a cultural and information uh, and educational center for Armenians, and it helps Armenian L Londoners uh, with legal and employment issues, how to sign on, how to, or how to get benefits, um, and it really helps them learn their English as well. So if you are Armenian, get over to Acton Town, because um, you're going to find a whole vibrant community here to help you. Um, and now I wanted to film inside the Hayashen, uh, but I couldn't get in touch with them because of the, um, the current situation at the moment. I really wanted to ask them whether they were aware of um, that Ian Gillen, who is for him, uh, so, well, I'm sure they are aware of that Ian Gillen, but maybe, maybe Ian Gillen had something to do with the building of the centre in 1994, after what is so close to the school where he was from. Um, so I just really wanted to find out about it, but maybe if you know the answer, do tell us in the comments below, because I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, so what else can I tell you? Well, if we were to go further down the street, we're not going to do it now, um, but you'd find the Ukrainian Orthodox Autocephalic Church. So there you go, Poles, Armenians, Ukrainians, you name it. This is a cosmopolitan honeypot and it's all the better for it. Okay, so we're just going down Gunnersbury Lane. Uh, Acton Fire Station. Now there's a very funny, interesting thing about this. I don't know if you ever look on Google street map but the section from the Acton fire station to the end of the road you'll not you'll not find it you'll not find it on google street map even though the, the google cars have been coming up and down here for years and years but for some reason they never ever show this little bit so they let google never explain why they do this obviously either someone important or someone who really values their privacy lives down there so I won't film there because they might end up trying to get my YouTube channel removed or whatever so but just uh, an interesting little factoid so this area um, well as I said back there that's um, the old Acton town or Church Acton as it was known Acton Church um, this is now Acton proper and this particular crossroads has got some fantastic pubs you got the Red Lion and Pineapple over here you have the Chatsworths over there and over there you have the Aeronaut. Uh, the Aeronaut we're going to go into later because uh, it's a very interesting pub, one of my favourites around here. But before we go to the Aeronaut, just want to show you something over there. Okay, well unfortunately I can't really show you, but um, the Twyford Church of England High School, uh, this area behind this fence, which is all closed off at the moment. Because... Yep, thwarted again, this time by a mixture of school holidays, utility works and this pesky pandemic. But what I had wanted to show you here was this green plaque to commemorate the birth of Winnie the Pooh.
It was here where the Farnell factory produced their Alpha Teddy, which was then bought in Harrods by A.A. A. Milne's wife and given to the young Christopher Robin. We all know what happened next. And, uh, I really, really fancy a drink, so I think we're going to time to go and visit the Aeronaut. Yay! Another. Beer yeah, fantastic. And there's some interesting things inside the Aeronaut to show you as well. Not, and also it's got history. We're in the beer garden. Uh, very good social distancing here. Um, we've uh, had to scan an app to show where uh, where we're seating um, and um, and uh, everything gets cleaned after we leave after we've made a covered it with our spore, our spore. Our spore. <laughs> it used to be called a long long time ago the White Hart Hotel and this is where the Who played a lot of their very early day, uh, gigs between 1963 and 1964 in fact it was so early they weren't even called the Who then, they were called the Detours. I think they changed their name because there was another band called the Detours in America. The hotel's had a lot of names since then. Um, I remember it's called the, Red, the Redback for quite a long time. Um, but then it was named the Aeronaut and there was a huge fire here on New Year's Eve on the 1st of January 2017. 340 revellers. I feel so sorry for them. They all had to be evacuated in the middle of a fire which almost gutted the place. Um, but they've done a fantastic job. I mean, this garden is one of my favourite gardens um, in Acton for, for pubs. Um, it's got um, another sort of barbecue and, and bar just, out, just down there. And inside, the whole place is done like a fairground. Um, now we'll show you, but we're not allowed to leave our seats unless we're going to the toilet. But there is a, a balloonist's basket in the bar. Lots of interesting fairground things all over the place, which would, you know that guy Drew from, from Salvage Hunters, he'd, he'd have a fun time here. He'd be, he'd be offering money to the owners all over the place. Saying, I want that, I want that, I want that. Ah yes, the virtual reality room. Something else I would have shown you had these not been such crazy times. Mm. And now the other thing that happens in this pub is they have lots of comedy nights um, and the uh, London Comedy Writers. Uh, uh, we've been holding comedy nights here. I've ha actually had a short play I wrote performed in this very pub in their, in their room. And the room is just amazing. It all looks like a, like a circus tent. They've got a circus, circus canvas uh, roof. <laughs> Oh, we've made a friend, I don't know. Good boy. In the next instalment of Love Your London, we discover the location of a very famous grocer. Oh, there we go, that's an original sign. Visit another pub. Now, am I right in thinking that um, if you say the, um, the, the shipping forecast in the right order, you get a free drink? No. Uncover more televisual heritage and begin our journey down Churchfield Road, Acton's charming main shopping street. In the meantime, from the Aeronaut, bye! bye. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond, love your London, have a banana. <laughs>